Welcome to Helping Hands with your hosts, John Neiman and Judy Ritchie. Hello, and welcome to Helping Hands. This is our opportunity to let you in this community know how to lend a helping hand to a program or an agency in need. I'm Judy Ritchie with Oshkosh Family Meals on Wheels. And I'm John Neiman with Aurora Medical Center and welcome to the wonderful month of October. As you can see by the set design, we are all set for fall and for Halloween and trick-or-treating. And I promised Judy that the spider that's in the middle of our table will not get any closer, <laughs> closer to her than it has to. We're glad that you could join us here. Uh, we want to begin always by thanking our sponsor whose monetary support makes this uh, show possible, and that would be Aurora Healthcare. And then also our set design is by um, Harnix. Uh, you can see us on CATV2. We're on five of the seven days of the week. Um, you can listen to us on the radio at 101.9 FM. You also can see us on Charter 984. Go to the OCM website. Lots of great information there on other shows too. But for us, for Judy and myself, we're in our 12th season here of uh, Helping Hands. As Judy said, the purpose of the show is just to talk about volunteerism, promote volunteerism. I do have to say that I get phone calls. I um, actually got two phone calls after last month's show. One was about a donation and one was about someone wanting to be a guest. So if you um, want information on how to be a guest on our show, contact Judy or myself. Our information is on um, at the end of the show. And Judy, let's talk about our first guest. It is, and it's something really unique to this area. And um, so we have Heather Palman, who is an intern with Lutheran Homes, or Bethel Home, uh, here in Oshkosh, which is a senior uh, community. And a really neat program called Cycling Without Age. And explain that. Are we putting our seniors on bicycles and just letting them take off? <laughs> or what are we doing? Well, in a way we are. Um, Lutheran Homes of Oshkosh has recently purchased three rickshaws. Rickshaws are kind of a three-wheeled bicycle where our elders sit two in the front and with a pilot behind them. So in an essence, we're getting our elders outside on a bicycle. And you've had a lot, there's a picture of it for our uh, TV audience, you've had a lot of great exposure on this, uh, not only in the Oshkosh Northwestern, but the TV cameras came for your big kickoff and everything, and that's always cool. But now we have the nuts and bolts of it that you are putting together, and, and that would be routes and getting volunteers and all that. So what do you want to talk about? You want to talk about volunteers that you need first? Yeah, sure. Um, we are very happy to have any volunteers. It's something that we, we need to keep this program running, and our elders just really look forward to getting outside. A lot of these uh, men and women haven't been outside um, the nursing home or Bethel for quite some time and they really just enjoy the wind in their hair which is the tagline to the whole Cycling Without Age movement. But we're really looking for volunteers to get out and um, come see what it's all about, see if they're interested. If they don't feel comfortable pedaling the bike we also can have volunteers come and just ride with our elders or um, children can come ride their bikes alongside the rickshaws as well. I saw, saw and heard that tagline wind in our hair and then I had this elderly gentleman come to Aurora as a patient and he, and he said to me that he had a ride and he was thankful but he said as you can see John I have no hair so he said he, he said it still felt good it was the wind on my scalp so but he but he enjoyed the idea of being out with um, with other people getting involved in the community well, and one of the volunteers on the committee getting this started was is someone prominent in the community that we've all known for a lot of years, and that's Doc Sunlightner. Doc Sunlightner. And um, anything he's got his hands in has got to be hilarious as well as very beneficial. And he's still, uh, yeah, he, he's mm -hmm. still so involved with, with everything going on in his life. He's still really well involved. Mm -hmm. Talked about volunteers. So we already talked about something that we always ask people, our background checks, and you do run background we do checks. run background checks for just a regulatory standard. I mean, we believe everyone's a good person, but it's just something that we do need. And do you go with the full background check that you do for your volunteers in, you know, working with, within the building on campus yes. with the TB checks and all of those kinds of things? Actually, we don't require a TB screen at all. Okay. It's just the strict background check as if we would do for normal volunteers. Okay. And is there an age limit? 
So you have to be 16 or? Well, we were talking about that. Originally, we were going to set it for 18 valid driver's license just to be safe. But the more we got to speaking with um, the folks over in Europe when they came over on the 24th in August, they had young children as young as 14 out in the rickshaws. They would stop by after school and they would take elders that they didn't know out for rides and that's what they would do almost every day. So we're, we're working on expanding the age range. Which when you look at area hospitals and all that too, age ages go anywhere from 14, 15, or 16. So mm -hmm. you're right in the same scope with all that. Plus, I would think those 14, 15 year olds have a lot of energy. They, <laughs> they, they have day. the energy <laughs> and with the parental consent mm -hmm. and those kinds of things, uh, makes a huge difference. Uh, family volunteering. So maybe mom or dad with one and the youth with another mm -hmm. and you get four people out at one time. Oh yes, we've had that quite often so far. So let's talk experience. So have you driven one? Oh yes, it so is a how, blast. How easy are they to drive if you have, you can have up to two people in one, correct? Yes. So does it take a little gumption to get going on them or? Well, something that makes it increasingly easy is we have a battery assist. So yes, it's All like- All right, a, there we go. Yes. Okay. Just to be, because we do have kind of a load on there and okay. turning could be difficult, if, especially going up an incline. But we have a lithium ion battery that is powered only when you pedal. So as long as you're pedaling and you have the oh. throttle engaged, you'll have that assistance. That is smart. And that mm -hmm. is really good because I know even when you're doing a bicycle built for two, it's hard just to get the momentum mm -hmm. to get going. Mm -hmm. That sounds really, and that's something that was not mentioned anywhere else. So it's like, this is great news for us to hear. Oh, yes. Right. It's like a scoop you gave us on our show. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that I found when I was going on the website and all the information, it, it talked about the benefits to the elders, but it really didn't talk about the requirements for the rickshaw pilot themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that folks in the community really want to know because, you know, what am I getting myself into? So this, this was really good. Um, and speaking of that then too, what are they getting themselves into? Do you expect them to do this um, every, once a week for every week? Or what, are your, what do you expect from the volunteers? We have no requirements for the volunteers. It's great enough that they volunteer their time to come out and spend with the elders. We have no time requirements whatsoever. It's just um, as they would like to come out and volunteer, how it works with their schedule, because we know everyone's busy. And that's, and Judy and I are always trying to find volunteering places like that that will mm -hmm. offer something to all ages, offer something to those people, as you mentioned, who work mm -hmm. and they, they need a chance to volunteer and they can't do it during Monday through Friday. So you even said it's, it's open on the weekends. Yes, we're just recently branching out to offer rides on um, sun Saturday and Sunday twice a day. You know, and it'll be interesting. We do the commentary for the 4th of July parade and Bethel always has a float oh. and has the bus but what would be really neat next year is to have the rickshaws along with. Oh yes, our life enrichment um, staff is on that. They have plans for decorating the rickshaws and to have them in every parade thus far. Oh, see, uh, well, we good idea. I know. Great minds I think know. alike. Because uh, you know, um, you always they always win. When, you know, because the residents make the pom-poms and all that, they are always parade winners, no matter what parade they're in. Mm -hmm. And we always think it's really cool that the residents get to ride in the bus behind it and they're waving and they're excited to be mm -hmm. in the parade. Well, now they could be in the parade and actually have the wind going through the air mm -hmm. as they're riding down right. the street. Mm -hmm. So there's so many neat things that are out there in the community. Now, is that, <clears throat> are the rides limited strictly to the Lutheran Home Campus residents? or can an elder from the community otherwise participate? At this point in time, as we're just getting started, we are limiting it only to Lutheran Homes residents, but in the future we plan to expand and incorporate the entire community in this initiative. Because I, I can think of a couple of my Meals on Wheels folks that might be really intrigued by it. Oh, certainly. As soon as we get our feet on the ground, that's where we want to take the program. Well, then you have all those Simeana mm -hmm. buildings and everything mm -hmm. around and there Carmel. too. And yeah, Gabriel's and Villa. Yeah. They they are all included right. in LHO, so they So I mean that's a that's a pretty good size group right there. Oh certainly we have about six hundred. And I asked you a question before when we were off camera. So this will also continue through the winter if there are good days in yes. the winter. Oh yes. Um, it's a different experience when you go outside in the cold. I mean 
We go outside in the cold, sure, it's cold, but elders can handle that too, and sometimes they like the crispness of the air. We're not mm -hmm. going to be doing it every day necessarily, but if there's a good bright day where the roads are clear, we'll definitely get the rickshaws outside. Especially this is Wisconsin and the weather. I mean, look at the weather that we've had in September, continuing into October. Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. They say that the, the fall leaves mm -hmm. and everything is pushed back now because of the warm weather we had, so who knows? And we've had winters. Mm -hmm. where there was no snow at Christmas and all that too and it was green so that would be a big plus right there too. Mm -hmm. So the groups that kicked this off for you though was your relationship with the police department correct because they they came over on the opening day and they were a lot of the drivers for you are they continuing on their own now or? Oh sir the Oshkosh the police department has been wonderful in helping us implement this program I mean um, Lieutenant Don and Everyone from the police department has very active, helping us getting trained, helping us getting going. The police division is the police bicycle division has been very instrumental in helping us train and getting the road safety. Which was my question too, no. because I haven't ridden a bike in a while. Um, but there are helmets. They they the drivers wear the helmets, and then do they have to learn the, the signals for left and right and all of that? That's so. all a part of our training. And um, since it's not required by the state of Wisconsin to wear helmets, we don't require that helmets oh. are worn, but we strongly recommend it for safety reasons. Okay, and besides the police department, you've had some other bicycle clubs involved? Oh yes, um, Winnebago Bicycle downtown, from downtown Oshkosh here has been very involved, especially in the maintenance of the bikes. We've had a whole host of organizations help. The YMCA, the Oshkosh Senior Center has been very involved. There's just a list that could go on and on, various community members. And um, as you mentioned before, Doc mm -hmm. from Bethel has personally raised a couple thousand dollars just by himself. So it's really been a huge community effort. The community really just stepped in to help us out. Now, are you limiting yourselves to the three rickshaws or are you looking at expanding the number that you have? Oh, certainly not. We are definitely looking to expand to six rickshaws by this time next year. Okay. so. You need to do a little more fundraising, so we anybody do. out there that would like to donate mm -hmm. would be welcome. Oh, most certainly. And on the screen right now, um, so there, that's the telephone number of 651-8602. So who is that? Oh, that is Jessie Krings. Jessie she Krings. is wonderful. She is our volunteer coordinator, and she's kind of the clearinghouse. That's mm -hmm. who you would contact if you're interested in volunteering. Okay. She's going to get you all set up with the paperwork and the next training time. So the, her, her information is on the screen right now, so you can also email her at jkrings at lutheranhomes.com. So for our radio audience who's listening to us, the number is 651-8602, or her email is jkrings at lutheranhomes.com. So that way, if somebody wants more information mm -hmm. or wants um, some something to do with this, maybe monetarily, mm -hmm. as Judy said, or that that would be the best person to contact right oh, there. Oh, yes. Okay. Certainly. Perfect. So, um, anything else that you'd really like to share with us on this program or some other ideas that are coming up? Well, we're looking actually into doing some longer rides with our elders, maybe going down to Menominee Park for the day and riding there or possibly doing a longer bike ride down the Wyawash Trail uh, oh. next season. So we're exploring different routes and just getting the elders even farther away from the normal city that they've been in for quite a while. Which I think would be nice in the fall too, to see the, the leaves on the trees turning mm -hmm. colors and everyone's decorations. Let's talk about you now, because mm -hmm. you're kind of interesting. Oh. Because you told me, tell us how you got to Bethlehem, what you do, mm -hmm. And, and that this project was your first major project. So mm -hmm. talk a little about that. Well, I'm actually a student at U the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire, majoring in healthcare administration. I'm a, an intern here at Lutheran Homes of Oshkosh right now. So instead of doing my traditional senior year in a classroom, I get to have this amazing opportunity at LHO and do a year-long internship as well as going to school full-time online. So it just opens up so many opportunities and Lutheran Homes was gracious enough to bring me in and give me this wonderful opportunity and teach me. So I'm just really thankful. So you started this past June and you will end? I'll end and graduate in May of 2016. May. So this and so when you got on board, how, how much sooner did they give you this project after you got on board there? And were, The were, next day. 
pretty pretty much the same day. <laughs> really? Oh, yes. <laughs> The first they day. They didn't even bother to wait. Okay. <laughs> I know. That's a, that's a good thing. And I bet you it was like a blessing to have someone yeah. there because it, this is a lot of work. Oh, yes. I mean, and so tell us everything. So you do everything with this from the marketing? Uh, you put it all Not together? Not solely. It's been an organizational-wide thing. I mean, everyone's had a hand in helping out. It's just not one singular person, that's for sure. Except one, and the, I got the idea because... I read it in the paper and my sister mm -hmm. works there. And then I, I talked to a person and they passed it on and they said, this is the person that we need. And they gave me your name. Heather is that who they said, this is who needs to do it. So mm -hmm. I was very excited that they gave the intern the credit and to be on our show because you know at some places someone else does the work and someone else comes on and smiles. <laughs> yes. And it's so nice that you're that they're giving you the credit for this too and that you can talk about it because it is your your baby and you can see the the whole thing. So And um, just like a she can put on her resume that she's been on television promoting <laughs> her programs. <laughs> and we want we've won a few awards mm -hmm. over the last twelve years. So we just, are just oh, a know. couple we can say award we can say award winning if we want to. <laughs> sure. Do you want to give out the number and email again for if anybody's interested in monetarily or becoming a volunteer? Sure, sure. Um, the number is going to be 920-651-8602. Or you can email Jesse at jkrings at lutheranhomes.com. Well, Judy and I are so excited that that you were able to come on our show and that maybe we will get a ride out of this. Oh, certainly. <laughs> certainly. John, I'd like to see you pedaling <laughs> Heather and I will ride. Oh, and, oh. and you can you can okay. be the pilot. I've been doing perfect. a lot of walking lately, so I could I could do it. And I want the wind through my hair, but oh, okay, perfect. that's perfect. <laughs> but thank you very much for being a guest on our show. We're so happy to be here and to promote this wonderful venture from Lutheran Homes of Oshkosh. Um, that's it for our first segment of Helping Hands. Stay tuned, and we'll be back for our second segment of our October edition of Helping Hands. If you have expired or unused medication, don't flush it, pour it down the drain, or toss it in the trash. Safely dispose of unwanted or expired medications at the drug drop box located inside the Oshkosh Police Department. It's convenient and anonymous, safe and secure, and it's open to everyone 24-7. Drop off your prescriptions, over-the-counter drugs, pet meds, and more. Keep drugs out of the reach of children and out of our water supply. Dispose of unwanted or expired medications at the drug drop box. For more information, visit the Oshkosh Police Department website at oshkoshpd.com. Wisconsin is losing our World War II veterans. If you were a World War II veteran, or you know one who hasn't gone on an honor flight to D.C., please help us. The Wisconsin Broadcasters Association is partnering with all Wisconsin honor flight hubs to make sure every eligible vet remaining who served their country so selflessly gets the chance to go. It's time for them to see their memorial. It's time for their flight. To learn more or to make a donation, go to wisconsinhonorflight.org. Welcome back to our second segment of our October edition of Helping Hands. We're so glad that you could be here and join us. This is one of my favorite times of year is the month of October with the, the smell of the leaves and the air. It's trick-or-treating, there's candy. So I not only get candy at the 4th of July parade, I get candy for Halloween. So it's a great time. We're glad that you could be here. Um, we had a wonderful first guest and now we're gonna talk about um, some volunteer opportunities or events going on in our fair community that are put on by volunteers. So Judy, you want to start with the first sure. one you have? Uh, the first event that I'm going to uh, talk about is the Harvest Moon Madness uh, Fine Arts and Craft Fair. It's sponsored by Altrusa Club of Oshkosh um, and it will be on Saturday, November 7th at the Hilton Garden Inn. 
And one of the things that we sort of forget about sometimes when we're talking all these different volunteer opportunities is we've got a lot of service clubs in the area. And so Altrusa is modeled after Rotary with the classifications and things. But it's the makeup is primarily women in our local club. And the international focus is literacy. So that's going to play into our next month's uh, guest from the Literacy Council. But uh, with this particular sale, they're doing this classic book sale. They're doing a bake sale. They've got beautiful uh, handmade items for gift giving or home decor or all sorts of things. Um, and these are volunteers you know, from the group. And everything, all the monies that are raised through that are returned to the community with various projects supporting, uh, like the Salvation Army, the warming shelter, um, the things at the senior center, or Lutheran homes, or you name it. it. We do that. And then we've got Rotary with what, what they do, or Kiwanis. Mm -hmm. um, so very active in the community. And it's nice to support things and foundations where the money all goes back to the cause because there are some foundations out there that put on events and that but they have to take out their costs first and then whatever is left goes but it's nice to have these local groups where 100 percent of the proceeds of what you give for instance like to the united way which you know october starts off the partnership campaign oh and all of, no Octo it's, of, it's been i've already been doing lots well, of presentations yeah but yeah, yeah, but for the companies, yeah. right. for, the, for, the, for the agencies versus the companies, this is the time you're going to see it and you're going to hear it. It really does make you feel good to support your community and to know it all goes back. Another event that's, uh, that's coming up is the second annual um, Aurora Foundation event called Farm to Fork for Live Well Oshkosh. It all goes together with healthy eating. Mm -hmm. um, taking care of yourself, supporting our farmers. So this is the second annual Farm to Fork at Brighton Acres, and the date is October 17th. So you can contact Aurora at 456-6000 if you want more information on that and contact Beth Oswald. Also, you're seeing boxes all over our community now, and that's the Coats of All Kinds Drive, which is going on, supported by the Salvation Army. And this is a great chance for you if you're doing your fall cleaning or your coat doesn't fit is a chance for you to go through your closets and donate your coats. They definitely will take new coats, but um, the older coats are great too. And what I think is wonderful about this too are all the dry cleaners in our community who are donating their time and their services to clean all of those coats right. for everyone. And I was just at a meeting a couple of weeks ago and the need for coats is growing every year and one area that there's not a lot of coats being donated necessarily are like for the, the older teenagers mm -hmm. and um, well some of the smaller kids where they wear them out because they're so rough on them uh, but all, all ages and all sizes and then um, it's nice to have some money to buy boots or some hats, mittens, some gloves, scarves. It's so important because these are for people who don't have anything. Right. And I love how they changed the, t the name and on the poster. It's not coats for kids. It's coats um, of all kinds. And so look for those boxes. We have boxes at Aurora, not only on Doctor's Court and across the street, but throughout our clinic and hospital. And there's boxes all over. You'll see little ads for it um, in the newspaper, on the radio, of where you can drop off your coats. And if you do have coats, once again, you can give myself a call or Judy a call, mm -hmm. and we'll be glad to take those and then give those coats. Because now is the time for giving, and it doesn't cost you anything to go through your closet and do a little cleaning and find those coats or as Judy said, there's hats and gloves and all that which play a part into it. The farmers keep saying that it's going to be a pretty terrible winter. I don't know what that means, but they keep saying it too. When they uh -huh. come in the hospital, that's all I hear from the patients, and it's going to be a, a rough winter. So please, let's give back by donating coats of all kinds. Well, and the other thing, in the, the rummage sales, as people do the spring and the fall ones, and a lot of times that's when the coats have been tried on or the snowsuits and whoops, they don't fit this year. If you've got a few extra dollars uh, and you see them at a, a nice one at a rummage sale, pick it up. 
and donate it. You talk about the collection boxes by Aurora. Ellen Anderson over at U.S. Bank on 20th has a box over there. She's on the board. She's very receptive to working with folks mm -hmm. in, in that collection process. And there's another event that we just want to put the word out there. It doesn't take place this month, in the month of October, but it is coming soon because as the leaves fall off the tree and everything turns, it goes a lot faster. And that is our annual um, gift shop uh, two things. We have a gift shop holiday open house at Aurora on November 18th in which volunteers trans close the gift shop for a couple days and transform it into this winter wonderland and they get to see it first on November 18th. But we also have the dates for our own holiday craft fair and conference room A and B. Right, which is November 29th, 29th and 30th, which is a Sunday afternoon and Monday after Thanksgiving. And with this, it was started by the, the Aurora employees for the Aurora employees. And it's opened a little bit further over the, the last years. Um, and we have all sorts of original arts and crafts. Uh, we don't have any party plans. We don't have the pre-made, anything like that. The very unique items, a lot of one-of-a-kind items. And there's a fee for, for participation but then um, the monies that are raised through that go to support the Aurora patients and the Aurora caregivers. And the neat thing about this, because Oshkosh is into craft fairs and all of that, is there's no entrance fee, so we're not charging entrance fee on that Sunday or Monday. And there's one central checkout, which is a boost for a lot of people, so you don't have to write checks at every different vendor. It's, it's centralized. So keep that date on your calendar too, November 29th and 30th. It's on the first floor of Aurora in the main conference rooms. Easy to find. Just a past great the time. piano and across from the uh, gift shop. And uh, our crew is telling us that our time is winding down here. So we want to thank you for watching and supporting our show, Helping Hands. If you have ideas for the show, want to be on the show, want to know more about donating items to other not-for-profits in our community, give myself a call um, at Aurora Medical Center, 456-7013. Or call me, Judy Ritchie, at Meals on Wheels, 651-3316. We appreciate you being here with us and watching us, and especially as, this, as the seasons go, um, there's a lot more to talk about in our wonderful community because there's a lot more going on in the fall. So we do appreciate your support. We wish you happy holidays, get you a lot of candy at Halloween. And John loves suckers. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great way to end that one. So thank you very much and we'll see you next time on Helping Hands. Mm -hmm.